various ways have been found to put our atmosphere, the air we breathe, to work for us. Large pneumatic drills use air to drill or break up the concrete. Rotary saws are sometimes driven by air. Heavy loads are usually supported on air-filled tires. Most large vehicles are dependent upon air for safe and effective brakes. Air can work for us this way by its ability to be compressed. Here is how it works. When an air pump handle is pushed down, the air inside the pump is forced out. The pump is an intermittent source of compressed air. As each pump full of air is pushed into a steel tank, the pressure of the air in the tank will increase. More and more air is being pressed into the same space. The compressed air inside the tank pushes against the tank walls and against the gauge. The tank is a reservoir of compressed air. Even if the pump stops, the tank can deliver an even flow of air by adjusting the petcock. As the air pressure escapes from the tank, the pressure will drop. When the petcock is closed, the pressure remains constant. In this case, 25 pounds per square inch, the usual pressure in an automobile tire. This pressure can best be appreciated by showing its equivalent in weight, as demonstrated with this piston and cylinder sketch. 25 pounds per square inch of air pressure is exerting enough force on the bottom of the piston to support a total weight of 314 pounds. Now, 90 pounds per square inch is the pressure at which air brakes operate. By increasing the air pressure on the same piston to 90 pounds per square inch, we find it will support a total weight of 1,130 pounds. In other words, 90 PSI of air pressure is exerting 1,130 pounds of force. How can this force be put to work? Let's insert a heavy rubber balloon into this plastic container and attach it to the wheel braking mechanism. What we're going to do is to blow up the balloon so that we can actually see the air pressure, the balloon, pressing against the linkage. We will get our pressure from the air tank which is simulating the reservoir on large vehicles. The compressed air in the balloon can push the piston and linkage with enough force to actuate the wheel brake mechanism and apply the brakes. The air brake system of an automotive vehicle works just this way. The compressor, which corresponds to the bicycle pump, supplies the compressed air. It is driven by the engine. In this demonstration, we're using an electric motor. The compressed air is forced into two tanks. These two reservoirs ensure a sufficient supply of compressed air for any emergency. A safety valve is mounted on or near the reservoirs to protect the system and personnel in case excessive pressure should build up. Compressed air from the reservoirs goes to the brake valve which is operated by the foot pedal. This is the brake valve, which is activated by the foot pedal. When the valve opens, air is permitted to rush from the reservoirs through the brake lines into the front and rear brake chambers located close to the wheel. Each brake chamber does the same job as demonstrated by the rubber balloon. This brake chamber is the air-applied, spring-released type. Disassembled, it consists of the following components. The end cover and retaining ring. The flexible rubber diaphragm.
the piston or plate, and push rod. The piston release spring. The main body and mounting point. The diaphragm will move the push rod plate when compressed air is admitted into the chamber. It operates the brake shoe through the linkage. The linkage consists of a slack adjuster mounted on a camshaft. And a push rod which is connected to the slack adjuster with a pin. On the other end of the camshaft is the cam itself. When the push rod moves forward, it forces the slack adjuster to rotate the cam. This action spreads the brake shoes against the brake drum and stops the wheels. When the brakes are released, the compressed air in the brake chambers is allowed to escape through the brake valve. It is hardly conceivable that a load of this size can be stopped with just a little air. How an air brake system works can best be seen on this demonstration board. Air enters the system through the air breather on the compressor. The air breather ensures that only clean air enters. The compressor is similar to an internal combustion engine. Most compressors contain two cylinders, in each of which a piston is moved up and down by a crankshaft. The holes in the cylinder walls are the air intake ports. The piston serves as the inlet valve by opening the inlet ports to draw fresh air into the cylinder as it nears the bottom of its downward stroke. It closes them to begin air compression on its upward stroke. When the piston reaches the top of its stroke, the pressure is great enough to open the discharge valve against the pressure of its spring. This forces the compressed air through the line into the reservoir. Watch this cycle of operation carefully. Since the compressor is operating continuously and the engine is running, some means must be provided to prevent excessive pressure from building up in the reservoirs and to relieve the compressor of the strain of continuously pumping under load. That's the job of this section of the compressor known as the unloader head. It is controlled by a governor. The governor is connected between the main compressed air system and the unloader head of the compressor. The governor can be set to operate at a wide range of pressures simply by turning this adjusting screw. The usual maximum is about 105 pounds per square inch. Let's look at a cutaway view of a typical governor. The main component is a two-way piston. This piston incorporates two valves, an inlet and an exhaust valve. The inlet valve is held closed by a spring and guide. Let's see how it operates. When the engine is started, air pressure from the reservoir increases in the system. You'll notice this air pressure is blocked by a spring-loaded valve. As the pressure increases and reaches the governor's setting, or 105 PSI, it overcomes the spring tension and moves the piston. Two valves are operated by this piston movement. The exhaust valve is seated, closing the exhaust port. Simultaneously, the inlet valve is unseated and opened, allowing air pressure from the reservoir to move through the inlet port and around the piston and into the unloader head. This opens the unloader valves through their linkage. When the unloader valves open, 
The air passes back and forth between the two cylinders through the unloader cavity. Not enough pressure can be built up to open the discharge valve against the force of its spring. Air can no longer be forced into the reservoir. This action continues until the pressure in the reservoir drops to a satisfactory minimum, usually about 85 pounds. When this happens, the governor piston returns to its original position. This forces the inlet valve closed and cuts off the unloader head from the reservoir pressure. Simultaneously, the exhaust valve opens allowing the trapped air to escape through the exhaust port. Compressed air is again forced into the reservoirs and the pressure starts to rise. As you can see, there are two reservoirs in this air brake system. During compression, the air is heated. As it flows through the lines into the reservoir, the air becomes cool and its moisture condenses out into water. The first reservoir is called the number one, or wet reservoir. It is mainly used as a moisture trap in which nearly all the water can be collected and drained away when necessary. The number two reservoir, the dry reservoir, drains off the remaining water and supplies dry compressed air to the system. Normally, the reservoirs are drained every day. The compressed air feeds from the dry reservoir through two lines, one that leads to the air brake valve, and one that leads to the relay valve. Both valves control the flow of air to these brake chambers located at each wheel. The air brake valve is connected to the brake pedal. 